it's a it's a and no, she always can travel through liquid and because of that that's why uh, um, they usually do not go through the liquid layer which is the um, the mantle um, and this is the main reason why we know that there is a mantle and w that we know that there is a crust and that we know that there is a inner core and an outer core uh, all of this information comes from the fact that we this did do travel um, uh, and this when the waves travel through the earth uh, they encounter this encounter this um, liquid layer uh, otherwise uh, humans have never dug that deep uh, into the earth so humans don't really have physical access to the mantle or the core or anything else so um, this is why geophysics matters in a planetary scale you can identify what the structure of uh, different planets are using geophysics without really digging in or boring in um, so another in interesting fact, fact about um, geophysics is it can be used for uh, it can be useful in mars uh, the curiosity rover uh, that they sent into mars um, uh, had to encounter, had to go through this uh, one mountain called Ma Mount Sharp, uh, Aeolus Mount, uh, and this uh, Mount Sharp um, or Aeolus Mons, um, had, um, they didn't know how this mount was formed. So to understand that, they had to repurpose the accelerometer to understand what the gravity is. And by looking at the gravity variation, they were able to say that there, it is a low density um, rock that is in this region and it's uh and it was a really porous material material that has a lot of void space and by looking in and understanding what the rocks are um they were able to say that this uh, this structure or this um this mountain in the middle of the crater uh that they deployed the curiosity rover um was basically a uh, a natural uh natural mountain that was made from the sediments that were blown in towards the uh, the crater and uh, and they didn't do any physical observation just the gravity uh, anomaly and just by looking at the gravity they were able to understand what actually formed it and that actually brings us a lot of information about um, what geophysics could do uh, geophysics in Mars also involves in understanding all mechanism um, so Olympus Mons is one of the biggest uh, biggest volcanoes in the world uh, in the in the solar system actually it's 69,000 feet uh, compared to Everest Everest is like 29,030 feet uh, which is much more lower um, this brings us an important discussion about why why so big why why is the volcano so big this can be answered through uh, geophysics as well and there were uh, the insight rover uh, the insight rover is a i think last year um and it was to better understand the internal structure of the mars uh, we discussed how uh, these um, seismic waves can tell us about what the structure underneath the earth looks like and uh, it basically tells us about um by looking at, so we ha they dis deployed a seismic instrument in Mars. Uh, so when they looked into this uh, structure of Mars, they were really, uh, they can, by, by recording this uh, seismic waves that were recorded in the seismic instrument that they, they deployed, they can essentially find what the actual internal structure of Mars look like. Um, and that's a very important topic to, to investigate and it brings us a new it brings us a lot of new opportunities uh in geophysics so geophysics is very important for um the actual explorational work that we can do in um in space science and um space exploration it's a bit of an overview of what geophysics is and how it connects to thank you sir
Okay, uh, next question is to Dr. Aravind. Yeah. Sir, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. go ahead. Uh, when considering, okay, when considering the international level, uh, in which position does astrobiology research take place? Okay. Okay, I think it, it is quite good questions because of the, that's why I just uh, uh, already mentioned uh, when we had in with the astrobiology like subject in Sri Lanka because of, uh, I hope it, it's better if I can relevant to the discussions uh, in our country because of the most of uh, audience that listen to the discussions, I hope it's in Sri Lankans. So the most important thing is how it is interconnecting with the, our general economy and the, our research and the uh, innovation, how we uh, compare with the work together and uh, how it's going to be involvement with the, our uh, uh, social economy. So therefore, uh, before that, I think it is better I will show you some kind of uh, two maps. Uh, you can just briefly have an idea uh, what kind of field sites and what kind of organizations uh, which are supposed to do the kind of uh, relevant to the astrobiology research and innovation because of some of uh, places are uh, missing in those uh, maps. Anyway, you can see uh, those stations, actually the, the, the bottom one, most of organizations uh, important in the Europe, actually, again, not looking for the fundamental answers to the what is the meaning of the astrobiology. That's why I just already mentioned there was uh, fundamentally there are some kind of questions that is the uh, question we have to find those answers. But those clusters, in the sum of clusters, you can see the European clusters, and especially India. India had some huge project relevant to the astrobiology and personally. Uh, myself and the CEO of our Sri Lankan scientists were celebrating the same project. So they are looking for some kind of uh, interconnectivity with the economy. Because of the why we are just looking for the life being out of the planet Earth, at the same time we have to find some kind of sustainable environment and the uh, self, uh, proper survival environment because of the reason if somehow organizations, uh, it means that there are many kind of organizations in the whole world, they are just looking for the providing and the funding to be finding new kind of uh, life being beyond the earth. But but purpose is why? So how could we find the funding and the, all the things regarding what factors? Only thing, that's why I just already mentioned, it is only for life. So we have to, we have to find some kind of uh, Proper environment. It is all actually harboring the environment. Is providing the harboring niche environment. So, example, uh, these uh, field sites, you can see some of field sites in uh, USA and some of field sites in Europe and as well as South uh, Africa. So, actually, these are the organizations which are looking for something extreme conditions. Somehow, somehow reason, uh, it, it, it might be like a high radiation, let's say an oxygen high pressure, like situation. Uh, according to my subject, as a, a paleontology and all those things, we are just looking for the kind of uh, microfossils and all the things uh, which are supposed to survive in the extreme condition. It means where we extreme condition, even though Sri Lanka and also very important place so there is no organization pointing here, but uh, in Sri Lanka, we have uh, three type of uh, uh, fossils. It means uh, it is representing the uh, three different period, example, uh, Jurassic period and the Miocene period and the Pleistocene period. We have some kind of fossils belongs to those three periods. India also have this some kind of rich fossils that because of the it is uh, having some kind of initial discussions of the paleontology is quite important. 
and the fossils because of the we have some kind of idea of the what is happening in the prehistory and and how those uh, microbial organization or microbial organisms or some kind of uh, megafauna how they adapt to the, their environment so this is quite important after that you can just compare with the outside of the planet uh, the most important thing is without comparison uh, with the like a uh, uh, earth like uh, living being planet so we we, we we call it with the systematical comparison method actually uh, you know planet earth is the one and only place that you have find out the living being but uh, how could we compare with the outside meteorite or asteroid or whatever the object with the planet earth somehow reason if they have some kind of extreme adaptations actually uh, i will show you something uh and here see uh these are the some of minerals and the meteorites uh, which are prevalent uh, <clears throat> which are supposed to be some kind of uh, microbial life being actually it is quite surprising is sometimes we are unable to have in a systematic comparison planet earth to another one but anyway it is better to have in a proper examination proper research relevant to the extreme conditions like uh, like this situation you can see uh, that's why the most important thing is to introduce in the eco astronomy like subject based on the paleontology and geological analysis first thing we have to analyze the the, the what are the those extreme conditions these are the common patterns uh, which was any kind of uh, organizations in the world they are just looking for something extreme condition they are just looking for paleontological factors uh, hydrothermal events and high radiation patterns like that so these are the points you can easily find out from anywhere uh, regarding the astrobiology research even though this image also just uh, find out from the yellowstone national park so actually it is quite important to having a study of the those uh, extreme condition and what are the living beings that adapt to this environment because of the, uh, the, the, the we know we have some kind of uh, fundamental theories like the darwin evolution theory and the same thing lamarck so i was remember last 10 year uh, when i was at the school time the lamarck theory is rejected because it's not acceptable at the time uh, even though same time Uh, we just accept only Darwin, but those two theories just interpreting only physical evolution. So we have some kind of ears, fingers, and all the things. So only we just belong to the physical evolution, but we just forget something else. Yeah, it is called the neurological evolution. They are relevant to the Homo sapiens sapiens like species like us. So we have some kind of patterns here. The, the paleo neurological evolution. So, it is quite hard to compare with the extreme conditions but the theories and some of methodology has been changed with the time even though astrobiology when you have in the astrobiology it's also changed the most important thing is the looking for the hubble life which is it will be so supporting to the develop the astrobiology in sri lanka also at the same time see it's a kind of hydrothermal events we have the proper experiment and the same time the meteorites i'm so impressed impressed about the chondrite type meteorite because of the uh, still we didn't have that much a uh, huge amount of the chondrite moon because of the um, uh, some of uh, economical companies they have been applied new uh, applications when we are just heading with the analyzing with all those uh, microbials and the paleontological factors once they said so we just funding the oldest uh, doing the research and all the things and how could they profit same time so one of my friends uh, just asked me oh, it's okay we can just uh, approach same methodology for different applications so because of the uh, use of theories uh, when we if there are something in outside in the heading with the planet earth actually even though meteorite asteroid or whatever the object definitely It just going through the our atmosphere it would definitely have it's burning so in fact uh, i think approximately it's burning 1800 uh, to the maximum 
2000. Is there something uh, factors inside the that meteorite or uh, asteroid or whatever the thing? So how could they go into the survival with the, that uh, temperature? I believe there are some kind of uh, options uh, regarding uh, these segments because of the uh, aluminium oxide is a kind of a good heat resistance. Up to now in Sri Lanka, we just developed some kind of uh, furnace. So actually, it is uh, heading with the, uh, another solutions to this OC, like again treatment and other things. That that uh, based on the aluminium oxide and all the things, there are some possibilities to survival uh, the microbial organisms and the, some kind of uh, paleontological factors. It, it can be having a, some kind of harbor environmental is because of the contaminations of the aluminum oxide, but like it, it's dependent. Actually, this composition, it belongs to the pelite. Pelite is kind of another uh, most, uh, uh, you know, in some of country like Arabia and some of heated country, they're just using the some of uh, blocks to uh, resist it, create the resistivity for the temperature. So same applications actually. At the very beginning, scientists are looking for the having a, some kind of a initial idea of the astrobiology and they having some kind of innovation for research. This is how same research, same innovations, uh, having a multidisciplinary approach in the another subject. So Sri Lanka also there are some kind of these layers, you can see the white color layers, these are developed from the uh, aluminum oxide and inside of this uh, chamber, it's titanium. So it is the basement actually it is coming from the that meteorite incident in here. I don't know if it's the very beginning happening. So it is quite interesting. So same time it's quite important to have in as I already said, uh, like a paleontology background in Sri Lanka. And um, it is quite hard thing things to analyze uh, how could uh, the fossils or anything preserve inside of the, the meteorite and all the things because of the, I believe the, 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 the theory like uh, lithopanspermia can be accepted within next 10 years because of there are some very scientific manner to analyze. I don't know other panspermia, I'm just talking only lithopanspermia part. So there are here also, uh, we got some samples from the Aragamila incident also. Uh, still, that uh, projects are ongoing, even though outside. Of the Sri Lanka, there are many projects for the one with paleontology, as I said, uh, 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 hydrothermal vents and the uh, hydro uh, micro hydraulic springs. Like, so actually, after they had the same project, same technology, and same applications, they just look into the approach, another solutions. Actually, there are many fundamental questions in the whole world. We are sometimes engineering field, sometimes chemical field, sometimes medical field. So actually, if scientists can find out the some kind of initial innovation for research, so regarding the astrobiology matter, so same answer we can provide in the different questions, no doubt. So here the some of the items and all the things for his part. So there are many types of fossils, actually these are micro fossilization part. So these two are from the Sri Lanka. This one also Sri Lanka, and this is not from the Sri Lanka. This is uh, 3.5 billion feet old fossil, which was found from the Australia. And the, there are many types of fossils. I'm not going to explain in each uh, slide because of the, you might be have some kind of research in Sri Lanka. Um, definitely you can find out specifically uh, like a Jurassic fossil. You see our heading with the like uh, Sabragamo and Sabregomo Basin, uh, easily you can find out the uh, fossils like uh, belongs to the Pleistocene period, like uh, lions and uh, rhinos and uh, hippos, like it is quite impressive because of the why we are having dealing with these fossils and the reconstruction part, it's uh, quite important to approach to astronomy because of the in, in Sri Lanka, if someone is the uh, heading with astrobiology because of, I, I hope naturally we have some of resources and we have to find out the exact way to how we develop the exact path to 
achieved those targets with many students because of each everyone like astrobiology and astronomy but we didn't have resources but uh, the most important thing is it is I, I believe it is unnecessary having uh, some kind of degree program or whatever it is okay it's uh, in the optional type but without having uh, any kind of job opportunity no need to have in uh, that kind of platform definitely we have in a uh, job opportunity in the next 10 years i hope so the different type of uh, profit type and the more time for like um, at the end uh, so this one uh, actually uh, i just want to explain something relevant to this mass oil because some of the x-ray diffractions Analysis of the mass theory as it goes, like uh, minerals. So still, I'm looking for the some kind of exact fossil samples which you can find out from the mass soil, but still not. So that is the matter. But I believe it is quite important to have in a um, soil carbon analysis, which has a deep soil carbon analysis in one day. I hope another rover is ongoing. Uh, with the uh, NASA. So after we have in those details, definitely we can have some kind of uh, exact uh, solutions to how we can grow up to this kind of plants, this kind of microbials, the way of they develop uh, those flora and fauna uh, out of the planet that it is quite important. Same time, we can apply those technological difference um questions even though if some questions in the planet earth like as i said engineering and the buildings and some kind of underwater like that so i think at the end i will show you uh, what are those uh, fundamentally uh, the research and the innovation that we can apply to inside of the sri lanka and out of the uh, sri lanka it's because of the those uh, research and all of the things uh, develop uh, astronomy and because of the astronomy and the uh, astrobiology so this one also is so interesting thing so still i'm looking for some more samples from the scope because still i didn't see any kind of samples from the scope for doing samples from the mass but uh, i think uh, 2012 or 13 i have seen some of uh, samples from the moon so still we are just analyzing and all those things just looking for the uh, that uh, answers to the, that fundamental questions. Um, how can we develop the life uh, out of the planet Earth? And same time, how can we approach the those technological solutions in the planet Earth? That is, I think, that is the best way because of the as scientists, whatever the scientists, we have to looking for something, uh, make a, a proper sustainable culture and the sustainable environment to do our people. Same same thing happening. We are just going to be beyond the planet uh, that is what happening we are just expecting something better than now that is the thing so i'm not going to be explaining each everything oh uh, i think uh, that's uh, you have got the abstract answer yes sir thank you Okay, now let's turn to Mr. Marine again. Uh, so can you hear me? Yeah. I think, I think uh, okay. Uh, so Sri Lanka is still in its early age of space exploration. So what scientific projects or application can Sri Lankans conduct to improve our effort in space exploration? Yeah, the, that is a that is a good question. Um, so, just going back into uh, what we were talking about before, I mean there are a lot of opportunities that um, that you can do research in Sri Lanka because geophysics is um, basically you can utilize a lot of data uh, from outer space, and most of the data that is available. Um, those data will be available for Sri Lankans as well. So there's no um, scarcity of the data that is available that, um, from air search terrestrial sources. Um, and just going back into what um, 
GeoPresX and uh, what kind of data can we get from GeoPresX. Uh, we talked about how uh, you can use uh, seismo, uh, seismographs uh, that were placed in other planets to understand what the interior of their those uh, those planets are. But sometimes, um, most of the most of the time, we really can't land anything on other planets. Um, for example, like if we talk about Venus, uh, which is one of the planets that we know, and uh, Mercury, we, we really can't approach Mercury and land uh, uh, land a rover in Mercury because it's too hot, and sometimes it might not be able to withstand that temperature because of its uh, proximity to the sun. So there are a lot of problems that are associated with um, landing a rover and getting a sense of what the interior of that planet looks like. So the important bit is um, observing what's outside and making an inference about the inside. Um, for example, um, one of the biggest things that we can do is uh, observing the magnetic field. Magnetic field is uh, literally something that was produced by the rotation and the molten core itself uh, that is present within a, a planetary object. Um, for example, uh, like the Earth's magnetic field uh, is made because the Earth is rotating on its own axis. Because of that, there is a circulation of a magma inside the uh, inside the mantle and the inner core, uh, the outer core. And because of this uh, motion, it creates this uh, dynamo effect, creating the magnetic field. So uh, by just looking at uh, Mars, which is a um, which is another planet, uh, but that magnetic field itself that the, that Mars has is very um, low compared to Earth, and many many believe that uh, the magnetic field of Mars is stripped off over time, um, and people believe that it, it used to be a, a good uh, like a planet like Earth itself and um, they also believe that they were flowing water um, and now because of the, the actual structure of uh, Mars but, and because the actual structure of Mars, there are some areas that have uh, these, um, these canals or canyons uh, that representative of uh, water flow uh, over time. And uh, there are research that were done um, on Mars that talks about uh, what are the types of, of what kind of uh, the, the ice layer itself that is present on the northern part of Mars and uh, northern pole of Mars um, and you have the um, but the going back into magnetic field uh, magnetic field is something that you don't have to uh, observe by a rover that is present inside you can measure it from satellites and satellite information is most of the satellite information is freely available and it's accessible to everybody. Um, and that's a big opportunity uh, for Sri Lankans to focus on uh, getting that kind of data and kind of learning what that data can do for you and uh, what, what that data can do for your interests. And, um, and that is a big part of it. Uh, Mars has a remnant magnetism. It doesn't have a big magnetic field. Um, so that means that magnetic field is only stored in those parts uh, that were um, basically magnetized uh, when there was a magnetic field back in the day. So th those are uh, these small umbrella looking structures uh, uh, are basically those remnant magnetism that is in Mars, uh, but there is no big magnetic field like Earth. Um, so that gives out the fact that Mars Maybe Mars does not have that kind of a, a big uh, inner core, or that, that spinning inner core or a li liquid outer core is not present within Mars. And that's a big deal. Uh, and that's a big assumption that we can make just by looking at um, just the magnetic field data. Uh, and there are a lot, there are plenty of uh, satellites that are um, sent to uh, outer, outer space, um, not on just not around Earth, around Mars, Jupiter, there are a lot of uh, satellites that you can utilize and that, that data. Uh, if you are 
in an educational uh, profession or if you're a student conducting a research, if you ask access from uh, NASA or uh, ESA or any other um, satellite company, I think uh, most of them would, would love to actually give uh, the, the data for research purposes. Um, and uh, going back to the interior of uh, different planets, uh, we can make assumptions of what the interior looks like just by make, measuring gravity, magnetism, surface features like poles and volcanism, uh, surface temperature by measuring the surface temperatures existing on the outer, in the crust. Um, we can make assumptions of um, what the interior is. So if you have a big volcano, like in Mars, uh, the Olympus Mons, which is really big, that means even though it does not have a uh, outer uh, liquid uh, outer core, it might actually have a mantle. Um, so that's indicative of having this mantle. So if you have this magmatic activity, then that's a big part of a uh, big part of what the uh, what the planet's interior is. So we can infer uh, what the interior looks like and what the planetary structures look like just from um, many data that is available for the public, uh, just like gravity, magnetism, surface features, stuff like that. Going back, going a little bit forward in towards uh, what data is available for Sri Lanka, um, the big thing is mainly the remote sensing applications that's available for Sri Lanka. Uh, remote sensing applications, you don't really need to have a satellite that you own. Uh, yes, Sri Lanka has two satellites. One is a communication satellite, and the other one is a research satellite uh, that was sent on a purpose of being three or four main goals, uh, which we'll get to a bit later. But um, there are other satellites that, that has uh, free data that you can get. Um, MODI satellite is one of the biggest uh, uh, contributors of that, which is a NASA-based satellite. And they have different spectrums uh, that give uh, different information about the Earth. Um, so the true color one can give you information about um, uh, the cloud cover. It can uh, tell you information about what kind of uh, land cover is there for the cover changes. And that's a big part of uh, what that can, data can do. And Chlorophyll A um, can tell us about information regarding the presence of uh, chlorophyll, which is the um, different algae, the algae growth in Sri Lanka, which is a big problem. We know that. And we can we can truly get a, a time series data set um, from, uh, from MODIS. MODIS is one of those satellites. And sea surface temperature, we can use sea surface temperature to get a, a lot more than just the sea surface temperature because it can tell you about the circulation patterns and that can tell you about how the fish migrates from one location to the other and how the, um, how the water upwells from the bottom of the sea floor bringing in nutrients and um, it also tells us about uh, how this contributes to uh, the fisheries and can the fishermen catch more fish uh, during a certain season, season than the other season. So it brings a lot of economical um, uh, mobility, economical um, improvement to Sri Lanka. I think utilizing data, data sets like MODIS, um, while that is not a great exploration, it is part of using space data, which is satellite data. Um, for Sri Lankan uh, economy and uh, everything else. Um, this is another image from Landsat, which is also a free available source that you can download and analyze data. And this uh, showcase how uh, before a flood and after a flood, how uh, how does that uh, that water that land landforms change and you can see there's a, a winds, uh, a much more winds uh, in this image. This is after a bigger flood. And this one is uh, inundation due to a flood. You can see how much of uh, area is inundated because of a 
a big um, big flooding event. So you can use this data, and this is free data that is available for everyone uh, because the United States believe that uh, you have uh, that um, everybody should have access to information, and they have uh, published most uh, all of the data, um, actually real time data online. Uh, that you can download it for research purposes. Uh, of course, you have to pay what your research fee is, uh, but um, you can do wait, and they will give you the data um, and it's free. Great data, which is uh, another data set, which is uh, gravity. And gravity tell, tell us about uh, density, and density means how much of water is. Uh, it can can tell us about how much water is in the. Uh, in the water table, and while that one is not that much of a high resolution, it can uh, tell you kind of a general gravity variations in, in Sri Lanka. So uh, I know uh, from just looking at this map, you can see that, oh, it's about four pixels uh, because the resolution is not that big. Uh, but four pixels sometimes can give you a lot more data than you think because this is a continuous country. If you can drag this, uh, so if you go to the GRACE uh, uh, website, you can drag this across uh, and you can get a continuous data series. Uh, that can tell you about a, a lot more information because GRACE goes back years uh, and they have a, they have one every uh, every five days. They have one, um, at least one data every five days because of the orbit. Um, and that data is also available for free. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's important to use like these um, data sets. I think Sri Lankans have the ability to, um, uh, much more ability to analyze these data sets and, and take um, advantage of these data, data sets rather than many other people. Uh, in states, I think uh, if you have interest in satellite data, I think satellite data is a big aspect for um, space science uh, and the development of space science in Sri Lanka. Uh, there are a lot of organizations looking into this. I think Arthur C. Clarke Center uh, for Modern Innovation is one of the big ones that uh, that promote uh, using satellite data. And uh, many universities, including University of Pera uh, which I am a uh, uh, visiting lecturer uh, for PGIS, I think, Postgraduate Institute of Technology. Um, we, the main students focus on uh, great data. Today's session goes very interesting. Uh, I would like to have an, a question. Uh, from this question from for Dr. Aravind. Yeah. So, uh, what are the research areas that happened in Sri Lanka, and what kind of stand it has in our country? Okay, actually, it's, it's a kind of uh, good questions uh, and the. Kind of uh, actually, it is like a kind of political question, sort you know, because of the how it is different on the administratives and all the things in the country, not only Sri Lanka, even though out of the Sri Lanka, and also uh, it is quite important, whatever the subject uh, discipline that we have developed inside of the universities. So, and what are the job markets and the uh, what are the new innovations uh, we can uh, providing because of the, that uh, same project. So actually, uh, up to now, I just uh, briefly described some of a uh, few of uh, things uh, ongoing in Sri Lanka. Actually, this one, which is a very common one, uh, some of uh, plant rotation uh, pack uh, inside of the ISS. So, so relevant to the, this project, some of uh, in Sri Lankan and the Indian scientists 
uh, as well as uh, some of uh, scientists from the Singapore National University, they are just looking for the having a kind of uh, plant material in the very extreme conditions. Uh, because of personally, I'm not involved in this project. So they have been developed kind of uh, few species and uh, still uh, some of are in the pilot uh, mode because of the, actually they are just looking for, uh, after having uh, colonizations in the uh, out of it and uh, like a mask, maybe next 15 to 100 years, definitely mask will be colonized. So we have to find out some kind of uh, options so how are we going to be the new flora and fauna species when they placed inside of the newly uh, planet? It is quite interesting thing. That that's why I just uh, very early I just mentioned. So the harboring and the, the transformation is quite important uh, when we are having uh, heading with the astrobiology because of the that is the core. You know, without that survival tricks and the survival factors and the survival environment and the proper niche, we are unable to survive. So therefore, so definitely other subject might be uh, attend with the astrobiology, like engineering, chemistry, and the, all the subject even though inside of the engineering, especially chemical engineering background, it is so important all run up to develop the the uh, astrobiology. So this is one. Uh, ongoing project and same project uh, they are just looking for having uh, some kind of uh, hydroponic system new hydroponic smart hydroponic system i believe uh, same time they just approach to the uh, something like uh, idolis or something out of the planet uh, same time it's better we can just provide into the our economical civil economical sector and same time this is uh, i think uh, quite important uh, things uh, 1960 to 1950, as I remember, inside of the NASA JPL, they have been developed the, uh, some of new treatment called ultra low frequency. At the very beginning, they have found out this uh, treatment called the increase in the metabolism, uh, which was, I think, uh, 1958 in the uh, first flight out of the uh, planet Earth uh, satellites. So, same time, they are just looking for something uh, proper. Uh, Energizing water system, actually, what is happening with the, uh, this treatment, uh, the water level is, is, is kind of uh, boosting because of the, this uh, ultra low frequency. So, at the very beginning, uh, they are just looking for only as a survival tricks for increasing the metabolism, as I mentioned. But the lately, same technology has been uh, developed by uh, one of the uh, companies called Cospec, which is a Singapore based company. So actually, they're just using the, that uh, NASA technology and they're just providing the new way approach uh, 2016 and the 2017. Uh, I was working as a data science, as a scientist and the Singapore as well as they have uh, hub in Sri Lanka. So, you know, that is very uh, usual and the very <laughs> um, a conflictable place in Sri Lanka. You know, that the North Chile power plants, they have a huge problem at that time. And the, uh, the, the matter is, the, 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 it did run up, I think, more than 50% electricity from the country. It's somehow reason that power plant is going to be break down. It's definitely affecting the whole country. So therefore, uh, what uh, that Ecospec uh, company has provided in the technology, they find out the use in that ultra Make sure to remember that ultra low frequency, how it's affecting to the metabolism. It is originally reserved by NASA and the JPL, I think 14 years ago. So now a kind of a different approach in Sri Lanka. Still, this is project is ongoing. I just mentioned some of the diagram in the 2019 uh, proposal. So actually it's, it's happening, you know, uh, there are three kidneys representing the left image also. There are three turbines over there. So when the flower plant is ongoing, it, 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 we have to be some kind of a water way to cool, cool down the that generators. So we have to pump in the dose to have the water into the, that power plant for cool down the three generators. And huge amount of the water they have to pump in an hour, I think more than 16,000 cubic meter per um, Hour. So what's happening in there? So it has some kind of uh, huge suction. So 
with this abstraction, there are many clean beings, like a fish, usually bamboo. So they just uh, going through that uh, same culvert. So what is happening? Uh, all those the fish species and the barnacles going stuck inside of the, those culvert, and so the power plant has been stuck at the end. So up to now, they have some kind of uh, solutions for that. What they have been done, they're just putting the chlorine and all those things inside of the, those culvert to kill those um, fish and the barnacles and all the things. So that is what happening up to now. So finally, a cosmetic company and this is all our scientists, they have been providing the, that solution using ultra low frequency. They can control the, that uh, microbial thing. Actually using those uh, ULF uh, treatment, we can control the, the corrosion inside of the uh, some of culverts and all the things. Actually, it is a kind of a new generations uh, water treatment pattern out of the chemicals. Most of are using the chemicals to be some of chemical treatment like boilers and the cooling towers and general pattern. I mean, so in here we are just looking for the upgrading that uh, system by applicable with the ultra low frequency. So I believe I think it is quite uh, strategic and this successful uh, project, but uh, it is quite risky because of the, you know, the, the chimney to the that uh, sea. There are some kind of, uh, there are more than uh, 400 meters. Uh, there are three uh, to six culvert combining, uh, more than uh, 11 below. So if you want to be uh, install those ULF frameworks and all the things, definitely we have to be dive uh, below 11 meters and we have to fix each frame uh, until 400 meters. And so otherwise uh, the suction is getting changed when it's close to the power plant. So anyhow, uh, if it's success for via this project, definitely this power plant can upgrade in more than 50 megawatts. It's a huge amount. 50 megawatts means a huge amount. So this technology originally came out from the concepts of the astronomy and the astrobiology. That's right. So I believe it is quite interesting project. And the next one, same project, uh, we have been just uh, reduced the 60 millions of liters. Uh, same technology, same applications, but the different solution. So, and also this is quite important. Uh, this is one of our ongoing projects. Uh, in here, what is happening? Uh, as I already mentioned, there are some kind of fossils and the, uh, the, the paleontological region in Sri Lanka because of the, if you want to see the Jurassic uh, fossil, definitely you have to go to Kaboa and the Gaman Parliament. This area, we can find the Jurassic fossil. If you want to be a find of the Miocene fossil, you can go to the Aruakali. There are some Miocene beds and all as well as if you want to see the, the, the Pleistocene one, you can have in the Sabragamo basins and many fossils there. So why we need having uh, this kind of discussions of the fossils? Because study of the, the prehistory background is some kind of stimulation for the having a proper answer for the astrobiology. So in here, we just come uh, comparing this uh, analysis of the, all the multi-fossil data. Uh, we are current data, you know, uh, after we have you know, some kind of soil samples from the mass, same thing we have to be done. Because of the, the, the paleo environmental condition in the mass or whatever the planets or whatever the asteroids, whatever the uh, meteorites, it's so important to have in the discussion what is happening in the current situation. If you don't have kind of uh, reference of history, sometimes uh, the decisions and the, the sum of conclusion that we are making in the current situation can be, uh, sometimes it can be mistake. So in here, uh, you know, uh, we have some kind of uh, different momentum like that position rotation, you know, uh, rotations and the whole revolutions. At the same time, we have the Earth's position. It means that the axis has been changed every 26,000 years to 26,000. So, same times, uh, if we go for our climate logic and uh, looking for, um, is there something effectivity to the changing of the sea level changes in Sri Lanka because of the up to now, some of institute in NASA and uh, some of uh, institute in India, they are just so concerned about the land bridge because of the, this is kind of. Uh, <laughs> This is 
relevant to the kind of civil law actually you know it's, it's better if you could can find out the what is the history of the sri lankan civil law maybe you will surprise still it's in wikipedia so anyhow go through the wiki and just search out what is the history of the sri lankan civil war so it is quite heavy research background that is a problem so up to now we have that incident we have that effectivity uh, for as a scientist or whatever the thing what we are have doing it is definitely affecting to the next 100 year next 50 years so therefore we have to be so concerned what we are trying to do as a research or whatever the thing the effectivity of the next generation we have to be think twice so in in, in here what we are going to do uh, we, we call it uh, the young whales impactation so before 12000 years ago there might be some kind of meteorite impact uh, with the with the planet earth then suddenly uh, the whole uh, planet is getting uh, cool so we are just looking for something relevant to the evidences being that effectivity uh, even though sri lankan also we have to find out some of uh, uh, effectivity because of the that uh, the meteorite young whales impactation because of the the sea level changes and the, 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 the like uh, before 20 uh, 1000 years ago we have uh, the maximum uh, glacier percentage in this uh, earth so in that uh, current conditions we definitely we can just uh, dash code to uh, india we can just go uh, dash code to sri lanka we can just easily travel so even though some of uh, animals and all the things we can just go through here so but uh, we have to be scientifically uh, true that uh, manner so what is the how its connectivity with the land bridge and how its effectivity of the the, the, the uh, some of uh, momentums of the, the planet earth especially right at precision because of the, still we are just thinking uh, sea level rising and uh, Uh, like a uh, temperature upgrading like a uh, incident we are just talking but but we are just forgetting something the general effectivity of the those incident all are just said uh, it is happening because of the human the green sound green out effect and all of the things because of the homo sapiens so i am not accepting that's true that's true that's true but uh, in the any the 65 million ago there might be a uh, asteroid impact and the dinosaurs are has been extinct so the same condition they they were there was some kind of greenhouse effectivity so it is that is the pattern of the the, the planet earth we have to be understood the, what are the answers the exact answers that might be providing to the sum of solution so this project also ongoing is quite important project and up to now we have some of uh, carbon dating relevant to the our fossil belt and we are just trying to compare with the earth precision for 12000 years ago as well as 26000 uh, years ago um, and uh, 2015 year we just analyzed the extreme of uh, project as well as reconstructions for the start my trans like first in the okana panga cave so after that uh, the extreme of ice analysis is up. still uh, ongoing one uh, relevant to the sfdh museum in the pool so however we can just uh, build up the that all those uh, reconstruction spot uh, inside of the garden by the bay in the pool it is quite interesting project how it's converted to the geo tourism background so actually it's the beginning as for biology and did this the geo tourism man how it achieve the uh, economy and the all the uh, factors and now it's quite profitable one and the next same thing the second floor if you are just in the gardens by the way in singapore you might be have to go to the second floor there are some of us collect my trend select size reconstruction smooth some of the reconstruction part originate from the sri lanka so it is quite probable thing so at the end uh, this project uh, uh, there are two scientists from the sri lanka including me so it is providing uh, like a it's a really interesting project actually it is called a uh, artificial glacier project because of it is happening in the high mountains of the kashmir and the ladakh so basically there are three objectives of the, the this project so one thing is uh, we are just looking for uh, the bacteria analysis uh, the 
regarding the hibernating moose because of the some of uh, the mountain area has been huge uh, melting uh, increasing the huge uh, melting process because of this many environmental factors so therefore we had to find out the different types of the bacteria they just i don't know it, it sometimes it can be hibernating it's not dead it's hibernating that is so important when you're having talking about the vegetables as from here like sunset because of the they can be hibernate and they have some kind of cover from the the aluminium oxide like so easily they can travel uh, via um, our atmosphere it is quite possible since whatever the things we have to scientifically prove those incidents and this is how uh, the second second one uh, why we are doing the this kind of uh, artificial glacier because of its quite unstable soil in the that uh, that ladak area so artificially we just trying to develop the, the ice actually this is called a microhydraulic spring so artificially we are just creating the that uh, ice cube and when it's summer coming so naturally it will be melting and after that it will head into the uh, kind of uh, streams and the lakes naturally it will be added so is so important uh, project in the still uh, that project also ongoing uh, and the same time we are just analyzing the some kind of trilobite bed and uh, fossil beds uh, very close to the that uh, manali and other sites so all those project uh, direct objectives are just providing the some kind of uh, disciplines in astrobiology same time so we just looking for something uh, sustainable uh, providing the kind of sustainable answers like uh, providing the summer water is quite interesting and people are so happy in there because they, ha- they didn't have that much uh, water amount so i'm happy how we develop the, the innovations for the astrobiology and now it, it's turned to the another way and both of the objectives are success so and the at the end i believe uh, there are two books uh, already in the uh, online as a e version so you can have in a download those books and i believe you can have in a some kind of brief idea how astrobiology approach to the sustainable economy and what are the disciplines that you can use heading with the astrobiology and why we need astrobiology especially based on the harbor life concepts so i think it's better you can just freely download those two books and as well as this part archaeo astronomy one is quite important when you're having an astrobiology like concept because in sri lanka also we have some many type of uh, archaeo astronomy uh, evidences so it's better to have in some kind of analysis uh, after you just uh, waiting the those uh, for even the geology very part must be because of the without geology you having some kind of missing into unable to explain what is happening next what is happening then so like that so i believe Uh, as a young group uh, you can have in a, some kind of uh, multidisciplinary approach to uh, some of solution if you are looking for the astro biology or astronomy or whatever the thing is so it's better to head in with the some kind of multidisciplinary approach so that's it okay thank you sir okay now let's turn to mr malin again uh, so so we would love to know what are your current projects that involves your physics and remote sensing and of course uh, your future plans of for developing science scientific research in sri lanka yeah thank you um so uh, i think one of the um i think one of the questions that um, was in the chat i, I think i can uh, kind of go over that and we'll just a little bit later too but um I'll address that before kind of going into um uh, um what my kind of research is and what I'm doing currently um so the question um someone asked I think it's Hasmi Purnima um she asked that um what kind of uh, special degrees or masters should I follow if I want to focus on something like geology or astrobiology in some kind of a Uh, space institute and uh, i think the one of the it could be um, answered where in, in a very short answer uh, i think you what you need to follow is the uh, mainly some kind of a bachelor of science 
uh, and a master's, I think it's a master's, uh, which is very important. Uh, going to a PhD uh, can improve your chances on that, um, but I think uh, master's is important. Uh, it's doing research by yourself. So uh, as an undergraduate, uh, I've done a lot of projects um, that involve a lot of sciences, uh, not just geophysics, um, I've done research in um, research related to um, uh, even though I was a uh, earth science ma uh, geophysics major, I did uh, relate, uh, research that's related to astronomy. I did research that's related to electrical engineering, um, and those projects. I think those projects are one of the biggest uh, points uh, that you can make when you are applying to a some kind of a uh, institute what they want is uh, your expertise in um, multiple subjects rather than just one so I think um, knowing how to code uh, in multiple languages knowing uh, how uh, that, that brings a big big plus point when you apply to such an institution regardless of what uh, regardless of what um, research or what um, what major you are in I think it's important to focus on maybe computer science know a little bit of uh, coding know a little bit of how, how this how does the uh, sensors work I think that that bring that comes a, um, a long way towards uh, um, your rather than just degrees I think you should fo also focus on this so getting uh, part of uh, doing research okay so uh, so uh, going into uh, what my research is, uh, so um, what I've done uh, for the past two year, uh, one year is uh, looking into lava flows and uh, different underwater explosions. So I can uh, I develop uh, programs uh, to catalog these uh, underwater explosions. So if there is a volcano erupting in the bottom of the seafloor. Um, my system can uh, track where these explosions are in real time, and you would be able to uh, catalog them uh, in real time. So it, uh, it, it is very effective in identifying where these lava flows are. So um, I use seismic waves. So it's similar to what we use in, um, to identify what the earth structure is. So instead, I'm using it to identify where this explosion happened. So if there's explosion in this specific point and it is recorded um, in this red station, then uh, usually if it's in the bottom of the seafloor, it will come up into the seafloor and it will come down and, and that, that's a reflection. And uh, I use that reflection as a uh, method of pinpointing where this explosion happened. and uh, uh, when the explosion happen, the seismic record uh, looks something very similar to what well, basically looks very similar to this. Uh, so I am basically tracking where these explosions are occurring in multiple stations to relocate where these explosions are. So that, um, I mean, even from this point of view, it might only be a some kind of a, a, a volcanism research or something, but it has much more uh, applicational level work uh, that brings up the idea of you can track other explosions rather than just a, a just volcano. So it's very important. Um, and uh, after this uh, specific work, uh, I'm currently just uh, doing research in Antarctica in Brentsfield. Um, so in Brentsfield Basin, which is the south of uh, South America. Uh, and I did research on this specific area, um, and uh, what I'm looking in is another uh, volcano, so uh, which is called the Oka volcano. And what we did is we dropped the seismic instrumentation, which is this yellow kind of uh, cylinders. Uh, we drop it to the seafloor, and we measure um, the different types of waves earthquakes that were happening in the region and we, we locate these different um, earthquakes and we use that uh, earthquakes to understand what the structure is in the volcano so if you have a, uh, a volcanic structure of uh, a, a big uh, a lava caldera, a lava uh, deposit a reservoir in the 
um, right below the sea floor, uh, uh, below the actual uh, volcano, then you can identify it because we talked about S waves, which uh, does not travel through uh, uh, liquid. So if you have a, uh, a liquid layer or a, a molten reservoir, uh, the seismic waves do not travel. So you, uh, when you uh, image the earth, it becomes kind of a, it becomes apparent that there is some kind of attenuation right here. So if you have missing data, then you know that 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 that, um, that explains where this uh, lava is. Um, and in a, in a field of point, in a uh, on a different point, if you think about this in a terrestrial ex uh, aspect or extraterrestrial aspect, um, then uh, it's the same thing. Uh, you can use seismic instrumentation. You can use Insight uh, Rover. The data from that, um, and if you have a liquid layer, you would have attenuation, and you would know that there is a some kind of a liquid layer in the bottom, uh, in the in underground, in the in the reservoirs, in in the uh, below the crust. Um, so this one goes uh, to one second. So that's about. So if you have uh, six kilometers per second, um, so it's uh, about six kilometers down deep. So that tells us about um, six to ten kilometers, and it tells us about uh, what structure is there. Uh, just use just trying to get the velocities of these uh, layers, and that's that's the current work that I'm doing. Um, I am also working on developing deep uh, learning models for predicting the likelihood of a person contracting the COVID-19, which is a side project that I'm doing uh, because I have a lot of interest in um, uh, coding and, and AI, um, artificial intelligence, and um, I was able to create this, uh, I think, yesterday, but uh, um, I think there's a lot of improvements that we can make uh, and we can even predict people uh, uh, getting COVID-19. I know it's uh, not astrobiology or geophysics, but it's uh, an important factor about uh, what I'm developing. Um, geology, in terms of geology, I'm uh, partnering with the National Building Research Organization um, to uh, develop a predicting to develop a method of predicting landslides and uh, to remote sensing and artificial intelligence neural networks. Um, uh, I've uh, done a fair bit of uh, projects with neural networks, and I think that uh, I think uh, developing neural networks and artificial intelligence uh, integrated with sensors and remote sensing in Sri Lanka is a, a big part of uh, what we can do in Sri Lanka. I think it can bring a, a lot more development and it can reduce uh, and minimize um, a lot of risks associated with uh, different natural disasters in Sri Lanka. Uh, when it comes to flooding and uh, droughts and things like that, we can also predict them. So um, my future plans in Sri Lanka involve on uh, developing a system um, uh, to predict uh, this, um, how much of a seasonal yield will it be uh, how, whether there is a likelihood of a, uh, a flood or um, if there is a flood, can we control it by um, uh, controlling, systematically controlling the uh, gates of reservoirs, like releasing the gates of reservoirs and uh, how we can use that to uh, do automatic flood gates and uh, kind of monitor this um, large reservoir systems in Sri Lanka. I think it's a big part of uh, what Sri Lanka is. And I think space technology, uh, like GPS, using GPS stations, uh, deploying GPS stations, uh, could bring a lot more information to the table. And I think that's one of the big points that Sri Lanka can, can do to develop and become uh, part of that developing um, much, um, much higher, uh, climb up the ladder uh, among many other developing countries. I think it's a big, big aspect. Um, so that that kind of uh, concludes why uh, what I wanted to talk about and uh, what my plans are. I think uh, there are a lot more that I'm planning to do in Sri Lanka, and I am uh, uh, I'm finishing my PhD right now. So I think um, uh, right after, I want to focus more on uh, developing these systems for Sri Lanka. I think it can go a long way. Thank you.
sir. That's thank you, sir. That was really interesting. Uh, Dr. Arvindan, uh, this is the final question asking from you. Yeah. If students have an interest on astrobiology, uh, how they can get involved and how to start at uh, research about that? It's the most corrupted options because of the, even though some of <laughs> universities in Sri Lanka, actually in Sri Lanka, uh, we have to uh, still, we are upgrading some of things in the astrobiology because of the, the, the especially as I remember, University of Moratua and uh, ACC IMG and the University of Corona and the Open University and the University of Colombo. All those are very uh, interesting of the, the astronomy and they, they have been providing some of uh, external uh, co courses regarding their degree program. So anyhow, most important thing is we heading some kind of huge project and a huge group of research relevant to the, the astrobiology. It's not that much easy. So I believe uh, because of the, the, the reason, uh, definitely we might be having some kind of specific studies there and the resources and the all of the main thing is how uh, work together, especially geology, paleontology, archaeology sometimes and some of biologists, we have to be work together to develop uh, all those uh, initiate uh, stages to uh, create some kind of platform for the, the astrobiology and the astronomy. So up to now, uh, some of our projects are ongoing, but uh, I'm not sure these days, um, I believe there are no internships and all of them because of the we are just uh, providing, uh, at the very beginning, we are just starting the, some kind of provisions for the from this one, but at the end, up to now, we are just approaching to the social economic background. It's quite hard to reach that stage to the students and all of it, but I believe uh, some of the projects, uh, I think, uh, not in Sri Lanka, I, I remember when I said the Ladakh and the Kalki border. So there are some of Sri Lankan students and they have done very, very nicely and they are so expert. Even though some of uh, undergraduate from the US, I remember Open University, and the University of uh, Jaffna, they have been done very brilliant work. So I think uh, best way to be, if you want to have any the astronomy, normal or whatever the subject, it's, it's better to have you know, some kind of actually the science discipline in first degree, and after that you have having you know, some kind of MSc or whatever it is, you can go in academic background. Same time, you have to be uh, providing uh, your projects and the research uh, knowledge uh, accepting the some of outsource because of the maybe it's uh, some of uh, private companies and the out of the government sectors they have been uh, providing such a uh, remarkable uh, projects which are relevant to the astronomy and other things but most importantly they are not, there should be somehow uh, institute how to be coordinate those sectors like uh, like COSTI, even though uh, government uh, coordinates sector it is called maybe you know this is COSTI. Uh, they have been done a very remarkable job in last uh, as I think the last five years they just coordinating very well scientific uh, research and the projects in Sri Lanka specifically you don't see some of different type of uh, universities so I believe within the next five years there are more opportunities to like uh, inside of the our uh, government university as well as the private sectors to provide in the astronomy and the astrobiology and all the things. I think it is a good good way to having a approach in multidisciplinary ways. If you are studying the engineering, anytime you're not studying all the engineering, you have to be heading into multidisciplinary subject. You have to be think a to me option. That's why we are just like any the job market in Sri Lanka and there are a lot of things. Even though uh, DOMO, it means the Sri Lanka Defense, uh, they have been a really remarkable research hub in, in, in across the Homagama. They are done a very interesting job because of, I think uh, people have to be some kind of access, especially university, university and the uh, some of our defense sector have to be uh, cooperative with one sector. This is the most uh, problem because of the, I believe in the next uh, one to two years, we have to be uh, some kind of well-coordinated platform uh, with
which was relevant relevant to the kind of uh, different subjects like uh, astronomy, physics, geology, paleontology, and engineering, and the medical sector all should be in the one platform to develop this kind of uh, subject. I believe uh, this is a really quite possible thing, and students can cooperate uh, in, I think, uh, up to now, they can cooperate with the other Seagrass Institute. We just provided a lot of things there, and we are just uh, behind the sum of uh, things we also can be provided because of it. Still, we are not in Sri Lanka, and we are just having some kind of project out, out, outside of the Sri Lanka, and we also just have to with the outside the Sri Lanka Institute and some of uh, universities. So, therefore, only thing we can uh, do uh, if government bodies should be coordinating all those sectors to providing any type of uh, subjects. So um, until they just coordinate this, this platform very well, it, still we have to be some kind of initial link in our uh, job market. There are huge job markets, but all the things for it's not enough to uh, complete in the, the, the general degree, they just complete in the MS, they just complete in the like a PhD, it's not enough to the job, I believe, because of the experience and all of the things and what you have done with your research idea. And the main thing, you have to be some kind of philosophy. So all those uh, compliments you can just achieve with your target, definitely you might be very successful uh, students. And you can be uh, some kind of main thing. I believe it is better if you can uh, think about some kind of our general economic argument because of this. It's not okay to be approached like a Singaporean. They just develop this different type of innovations and the kind of uh, research. It's not okay to the Sri Lanka, I believe, because of I have what we doing. Even though India, uh, some of are not uh, adapted to be us. So I think it, it is better, uh, whatever the things uh, innovated in Sri Lanka. And the research and innovations, it's quite compulsory and important. I think better than PC. So that is the most important corrupted things because of the, at the end of the every general degree, all the undergraduates are trying to complete the thesis. Uh, I believe uh, 99%, more than close to 99% thesis are just right down because of they don't have any kind of philosophical idea. But that 1%, they have a huge amount of the exchange and the huge amount of the research background. I don't know why, but our students are very interesting. They are so experts because of, as I say, in comparing with the outside of the Sri Lanka. I don't know, Sri Lanka had some kind of uh, much remarkable philosophy. They have some kind of strategic ideas. So I think it's up to uh, continue this uh, platform with the well coordination system and the uh, cluster with the each every uh, subject and the disciplines. So that's it. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so this is the last question from Mr. Marlin. Uh, sir, so what grant, uh, grant and opportunities are available for students like us in Sri Lanka to get involved in space exploration, uh, remote sensing, or planetary geophysics? Um, yeah, uh, so um, I mean, I have to uh, uh, also uh, say uh, that. Dr. Arvind, what Dr. Arvind just said was completely true. I think uh, it's important to be multidisciplinary uh, and being multidisciplinary gives you the ability to uh, tackle more um, real world questions rather than just, you know, uh, just knowing your subject is not going to cut it in the, in the future world. So I think that, um, so if you're staying home doing nothing, I think it's, you can take coding classes, I think. Uh, you can take uh, different other courses online. I think, of course, there are, I think, uh, there are other uh, education plat platforms that you can take classes in for free sometimes. Um, there are a lot more opportunities that you can do that way. I think uh, you knowing uh, what to, uh, knowing more things uh, and having that knowledge base about things that, that are not on your subject gives you those opportunities in the future. Um, so, just going back into uh, my presentation. Um, okay, so uh, opportunities for Sri Lanka. I think uh, one thing that we can get straight is that Sri Lanka is going into a space age somehow. Uh, it's uh, 
trust includes that uh, that's a page compared to many other developing countries. Uh, superintendent is one of the big uh, uh, institutions that were uh, sending satellites, communication satellites to outer space uh, from uh, basically empowering Sri Lankans. Uh, they also support uh, a lot of people um, in, to get into uh, satellite and space industry in Sri Lanka. So they are providing a lot more, uh, uh, they were thinking about and they have also provided international scholarships for uh, pa in the past and I, I think they will be doing it in the future as well. So I think the one thing that you can do is to kind of follow them and uh, if you're interested in uh, space sciences, I think uh, SupreMSAT, which, which is a good organization to get in with, um, I think they are in the, that kind of a pioneering level where they're looking into the South Asian space. Uh, they they're planning to establish the South Asian Space Academy in um, yeah, in Kandy, uh, and that kind of knowledge base will be present for Sri Lanka into the future. I think within the next five years, they will develop this uh, huge institute, um, uh, this academy for uh, for space exploration. And I think it's an exciting opportunity for Sri Lankans, and uh, because this is this is empowering Sri Lankans and not not anywhere else in the world. Um, so uh, there are other courses that you can take outside. So if you don't have that kind of a astronomy background or geophysics background, then you have to take uh, you can take classes in this. Uh, I think uh, Institute of Astronomy. I think it's um, I, I found this online, uh, and I think. They give you kind of a basic understanding of what the astronomy is, so that that's adding up to that knowledge base that I talked about. So if you did electrical engineering, or if you did uh, geology, but not really anything else in astronomy, but if you did physics and you want to know about astronomy, um, physics, um, physics, mathematics, uh, engineering, all the types of engineering, and you, if you um, if you do not have, if you did those kind of majors, but did not really have an idea of what astronomy is uh, or what geology is, I think understand uh, getting know and taking those classes is a big step in uh, in the in the right direction for you if you want to get into uh, space industry and uh, as a Sri Lankan. Um, there's also the Odyssey Clark Institute for Modern Technology. I think they have done a lot of research projects, I would say be active. So uh, at, at me as a undergrad, I worked on multiple projects. I did not hesitate to ask because sometimes only asking brings you a lot more opportunities. So um, people are so much afraid to ask. Sometimes um, you can contact this. There's a, a contact button right there and most of the sites do and contacting those people ahead of time, getting, asking them questions. Um, I know not everybody's gonna contact you back, but putting that first effort in to uh, that being proactive and putting that first effort is the most important step in uh, developing and getting, and being able to be part of these um, projects. Um, and if you're undergrad, I think they would be impressed that you contact them. I think that, I think very important point to make uh, as Sri Lankans, uh, if they're in university, sometimes they only focus on the university and if they're in A levels and all levels, they only focus on all levels. They don't really focus on developing their knowledge. They don't focus on the fact that they are, uh, they need to develop a uh, knowledge other than the, the A level syllabus or the all level syllabus. So I think it's an important point that you need to uh, be proactive and uh, uh, be, more energetic on the fact that you want to know these subjects. Um, so opportunities for Sri Lankans. Again, uh, BIRD3, which is Ravana 1, which is a CubeSat. So it's part of three uh, different CubeSats were, that were sent. One from Japan, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. And yes, the, we sent out this nice uh, CubeSat um, out of space. Uh, it was um, testing four different things. I mean. It's a big step for Sri Lanka. Uh, I think uh, this kind of project, uh, this this would only last for like five years, and continuous data we can get, and after that it's uh, it's a done deal. So we need to be thinking about um, what are what are our next next steps. Can um, 
this was uh, uh, by 18 scientists that were in Japan uh, at the time, and that, that's how we were able to do this. And I think that getting this international um, uh, international um, range of options and getting uh, knowing uh, and getting the efforts from uh, foreign people in um, that were freelancing. Uh, I think those those are the ones that would bring opportunities to freelancers in the future. Um, uh, and if you want to be involved in these kind of projects, I think emailing is one of the options. And if you are and asking, and if you're a university student, you can um, ask the access to these kind of uh, imagery and magnetic field data from through the university. I think they have a lot more links. I think you can um, ask a lot of people. People and they were actually as the professors be proactive and ask the professors whether I can can I can I can I uh, mess with this data can I uh, look at this data and uh, being proactive and doing research is uh, one of the best ways you can get involved in and develop your own opportunities. Um, other than that, there are other opportunities outside of freelance that you can do. Uh, one of the big ones is called the Global Innovation Challenge. It's by me and. Ops, it's open for everybody in the world, and uh, Sri Lanka is included <laughs> in the world. And I think that uh, what they do is they develop green technologies, and they're looking for people to develop green technologies and um, network. Uh, and it's how 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 can people develop these systems for uh, improving climate resilience and helping uh, society move forward with uh, doing climate change. And uh, I think it's a big deal. Um, that if you are in, if you have an understanding of what this is and uh, if you have an understanding of what you want to pursue, uh, you can put a, write up a proposal. You can get help from your professors and you can write up a proposal and you can submit it under the PTO idea and they would recognize that you you put effort into this and um, and best case best case scenario uh, you would get. Uh, uh, a huge grant uh, for doing innovation in Sri Lanka. I think it's a big part of uh, moving um, Sri Lanka forward as a country. And there are opportunities for Sri Lankans uh, for, in terms of NASA. Sometimes they give you, uh, if most of them are aren't for, non, uh, for citizens only, but there are uh, challenges that they put out in challenge.gov uh, that are applicable to all. Uh, not only uh, U.S. citizens, but also for all the citizens around the globe. Um, this opportunity is uh, massive. Sometimes, uh, and sometimes the grant uh, that uh, sometimes the challenge grant price is something like fifteen thousand uh, dollars, which is like thirty lakhs in Sri Lanka. I don't know something like that. So it's a big, huge prize. I think uh, people in Sri Lanka should give it a go sometime. Uh, if you if you look for opportunities, sometimes uh, rather than waiting for the opportunities come to you, um, you have to look for those opportunities. I think that that's a big part of uh, who we are, and I think uh, looking for opportunities is something that we have to do. And uh, challenge of job is good. You know, Centif is another uh, challenge platform. Uh, they seek for solutions to various problems. I think one of the big, uh, one of the ones that they uh, put out recently is the uh, uh, developing uh, methods for uh, COVID, uh, helping COVID. So if it's not your subject, yeah, go ahead and apply. I mean, if you have that kind of a little bit of a computer science knowledge, you can you can give it a try. You don't have if you if, even if you don't get selected, you can try, and that gives you um, more. Uh, opportunity to be uh, included, and that can go in your resume uh, that say that, oh, I did this kind of thing, and it's, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, so there's a, so if you are a, a Sri Lankan who is in the uh, United States, and if you're studying in the United States, I think uh, NASA Develop is the national program that they put out. Uh, Sri Lankans can join, um, and uh, they give you a, I think it's about a six month long program where you uh, you can be part of NASA and you can be uh, you are doing some of the NASA research that involves in in planet Earth and you will be developing uh, new um, some kind of uh, models you can you are developing different kind of uh, 
uh, you're developing uh, solutions to different kind of climate issues. Um, you are predicting something, and uh, I think national develop uh, develop national program is how NASA is actually uh, helping the world and helping um, people that are not U.S. citizens to uh, to develop their skill sets uh, that could be beneficial to them in the future or any other space agency for that matter. Okay, when it comes to freelance, I think uh, this is one of the big, big things I need to tell everybody. Um, so this is a Google trend chart showing SpaceX. This uh, shows how many searches that, uh, well, relatively how many searches are there. Um, uh, made uh, on SpaceX. SpaceX is a uh, is by Elon Musk, and it, it's a, uh, it's a it's a trending topic in the world. And, and this is how Sri Lanka kind of responds to uh, space industry. And uh, seems like uh, Central Province seems to be the most interested one uh, next to the Southern Province. And uh, I I mean people in Central Province maybe it's just because the fact that people in Military Terra, they may be very interested in SpaceX. Uh, <laughs> that might be the reason. Uh, other than, so this is another one. So, ro rocket launch, which is uh, some kind of uh, a topic that we can keep in mind there in space exploration. So, people in the Western side. So, yeah, just looking into these two kind of trends, you can clearly see that there is a trend itself that the Western, Western side of the provinces on Sri Lanka is. The ones that are interested in space exploration, not the eastern uh, eastern provinces and the northern provinces of Sri Lanka, they don't seem to be that interested in developing this space exploration. I think uh, I think that's something that we need to improve. As in, I think said Sri Lanka is something uh, is a is a good organization that can improve on this and kind of make sure that this. Space knowledge and the interest on space gets to all all the provinces in Sri Lanka. I think uh, that interest is important for the development of Sri Lanka as a whole. And interest over time, we know that Sri Lanka has a it's a growing interest on earth science. Uh, it seems like a good trend. I think it's a good trend to keep up. I think space exploration, earth explorer, earth science, um, developing earth science is a key to knowing what to do in space science. Uh, same goes for astronomy. People are kind of talking about on astronomy as well. So I think the good trend to keep up. I think it's a good thing that Sri Lanka, uh, Sri Lankans are interested in these topics. At least it's not zero. I think some if you if you try to Google trends on some certain countries, I think they there's not even one person searching uh, astronomy or anything like that. So it's a good thing, and I think Sri Lanka can go a long way. In space industry, um, but all it takes is your own effort, and I think that um, Sri Lankans have that ability to think uh, in, a, in some kind of uh, scientific sense as compared to many other uh, developing nations. I think um, that ability needs to be put into use rather than just learning the thing. You need to start applying. Um, and that kind of uh, leads up with uh, uh, my end of my discussion on that. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, so that's all for our prepared questions, and I'd like to thank you both for both for joining us again, and uh, hope all of you get gain a lot of knowledge today. So this is your chance to ask questions. Uh, so please feel free to unmute your mics and ask questions you have. I think there are some of the questions that were posted on the uh, on the chat. I think. Uh, let's see. So they, they asked, uh, someone asked a question of, uh, according to my knowledge, I heard that the magnetic field uh, is different in different places. Uh, so how come, uh, how can you investigate the interior? Um, 
yes, uh, it is different uh, because of the interior. So we use the difference rather than the actual exact um, exact value. So what you're doing is you are using the anomaly. So how much does it change from one point? So if you set the uh, uh, if you set one point to zero, um, and you can move from that point to the other point, then you check how much do you change relative to that point. And that will give you an idea of what the interior change from that point to the other point on Earth. I think that's the good question that somebody brought up um, in the chat. And the other question is, I think, uh, Luna Loop challenge. Uh, I am not familiar with it, but I think uh, that I'm not really sure of what the, uh, the challenge is, so I cannot really comment on any of that. So if you, have, if you guys have any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask. I believe there is an injection for me huh? to measure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are you finished? May I answer some more questions? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. okay. I think some of uh, from the Nigeria, if it's uh, relevant to be some kind of uh, habitat or on to the extreme. But yeah, that's true. That's true, Joda. That's true. Because of the, the, when you are analyzing the some of extreme conditions, it's many different type of uh, conditions. So, so there was some time there might be a huge opportunity to having a mutation and all the things because of the mutations is not a collected things that they always because of uh, the, there are huge possibilities to having uh, some kind of fundamentals reactions inside of the extreme conditions and after that uh, microbials and the whatever the uh, owner beings can adapt it to the uh, next level life. So it is quite possible. That is uh, how uh, happening is the, uh, the, the most uh, common things um, when you are having a discussion of the prebiotic soup. So if someone can just argue, so how those uh, elements uh, like, uh, like, uh, like uh, amino acids and all those uh, elements, just uh, putting the uh, prebiotic soup and after that it can be reacted. So the lipopenthemia like concept is just in interpret. Uh, there are huge possibility to do uh, survival uh, for life being. If it is like a microbial elements or whatever the things, it can do the uh, survival inside of that uh, amino acid layer. So there are two techniques. So it can be happening uh, individual mood, and it can be quite possible to happen in uh, multiple mood. So I think it, it is clear. So if there are any questions relevant to the, the, the astrobiology and the extreme conditions, like uh, can you just answer? Uh, how I should not uh, in oh yeah, the thing is. Yeah, that, that yeah. good good question. So, so ISS growth stands in space. Actually, <laughs> it is a very uh, natural phenomena. Um, ISS uh, how uh, uh, develop the plants and all the things because of the technology today. So I think uh, before five years ago, they have been uh, identified in many different species uh, all around the world. These are the plants that uh, very easily you can just uh, develop inside of the uh, ISS. Um, most probably, uh, there are many techniques like a uh, host uh, ring system and specifically like a hydroponic system. So I believe it's not that much uh, hard things to be, uh, develop the plant uh, type uh, inside of the ISO or whatever the things. So the same times, uh, maybe uh, what's the, his name, uh, Adit, uh, Adit uh, you know, uh, we may just really need the, uh, some kind of training in the astronaut or whatever the things they have to some kind of training in here as a as zero gravity uh, conditions. So it is quite important to have in that kind of uh, environment to 
uh, open as a, a public sector, you know, uh, there are some CEO gravity lab, even though India also, even though Metra, uh, they have uh, one zero gravity lab and Singapore have one zero gravity lab. Actually, they are not training an astronaut. Uh, they're just looking for you know, some kind of social kind of impact because of this. People are so interested into having you know, that place and they just, just flying that uh, area and so exciting and uh, it's like a psychological uh, treatment on, at the moment. So there are a lot of methods how we just uh, grow things and plants or seeds or whatever the things out of this big land uh, because of this kind of uh, extreme conditions. That's why I just already mentioned there are a lot of extreme conditions when we have to be very carefully analyze all those extreme conditions uh, like uh, high radiation, like oxygen and high, even the high pressure. So at the same time, we can just achieve to the uh, social economic background. This is how they have been done. Uh, and any other questions uh, relevant to the, and same time, uh, I just want to uh, remind something, actually they have, uh, maybe NASA, just, just search on the Google. Um, there is uh, another uh, training center called Neutral Space uh, Research Center. Actually, it is kind of neutral boring research center. Uh, how uh, astronauts and the, all the things are uh, training uh, under the water. So same applications, uh, I think the last few years we just uh, trying to provide in Sri Lanka and also like uh, creating some kind of specific high school then uh, creating all those equipment in Sri Lanka and how those experience uh, is just providing to the other students and the civilians. And actually it is also depend on the association. It is not the uh, academic or research level astronomy. It is based on the astrotourism lifestyle because of the Sri Lanka. It's quite interesting uh, locations and a quite interesting place to provide like uh, astrotourism like subjects because of the background of the archaeo astronomy and the background of the paleontology. It is a huge area. So I think it's better within a project we can do something for create those platforms and after that, I hope all those undergraduates or uh, researchers, they have been find out some kind of uh, proper working area and they have some kind of uh, job opportunity as well. So we'll see you know, any questions. Uh, I think there is uh, Yeah, uh, Marvin. Uh, there is yes, a question. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, sir, I have a question from you. Uh, sir, uh, my university doesn't provide uh, honors degree in geology and uh, earth science. Sir. Uh, as a, from a three-year degree, what? Uh, how can I proceed into the research field and uh, to, uh, keep up going in, in the academic field? Uh, that's a question I have, and another one I have. Uh, a few uh, I, I'm a little bit interest, interested in the uh, uh, planets in our solar system. Is there what institutes uh, can I pull satellite data from about our uh, other planets uh, regarding geophysical data? Yeah, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, I'll ask uh, answer the kind of first question. So uh, to begin with, I really don't have kind of the knowledge about the education system in Sri Lanka. Uh, um, but uh, I've heard of a few people who have a PA degree in Sri Lanka uh, who went to the United States to pursue their um, uh, masters, but uh, they couldn't unless they have a four-year degree. Um, so if you have a three-year degree, I think uh, one way you need to actually think about is how to get that kind of a special or four-year degree because four-year degree is something uh, that is important uh, in in terms of uh, if you think about in an international sense, most uh, four-year degrees are um, what actually considered when it comes to internationally recognized standards. So I think that's one thing that you need to focus on. And, um, I'm not sure how, what kind of education is out there. Uh, uh, um, 
does uh, Dr. Arwin you know uh, of any institution that would uh, be helpful? In, in Sri Lanka? Yeah. In Sri Lanka, I'm not sure because of, there were some of uh, satellite institutions in India, but I'm not sure if there are any access to Sri Lanka because of, as I know, only uh, satellite tracking hub in Sri Lanka is the Ramana one, which is located in the Arthur C. Clark Institute. That is the one and only one. So I'm not sure they have that much uh, specifically data up to now, I think. Yeah, um, so uh, sorry about that. So I, I kind of don't know uh, what kind of institutions there in Sri Lanka that could help with this. But I think one thing you can do is maybe think about um, getting a four year degree uh, or maybe doing a three year degree and maybe starting up your. Um, I think there are ways that if you can transfer, but it's I'm not sure exactly how you can do it. But I think that if you have done uh, a three-year degree, you can take some classes uh, outside of the uh, outside of Sri Lanka uh, that could help you with um, completing your bachelor's, then kind of proceed with your master's. I think that's the best way to go. I think if you want to focus on your master's and do research, um, uh, I think uh, a three-year degree would not be enough most of the time. Yeah, somebody asked a question previously, I think it's related to uh, by 2033, somebody's probing, oh yeah, is it true that NASA is probing to colonize and civilize on Mars in 2033? Yeah, I don't know. I think I think it's a long shot. <laughs> uh, right, it uh, and, time because of the, I'm not sure, Marvin, that question because of the I don't know how it's proposing to that exact time, but uh, one day they will definitely. Yeah, uh, colonization is not, not that much surprise thing. You have to be surprised somehow recently how are going to the way of they going to grow up the plants and the animals how they going to be faced Mars. That is the yeah. challenge. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, one big part of uh, Martian colonization is. Elon Musk and SpaceX. Uh, I think uh, uh, what they're trying to develop is, I think, one of the biggest projects that they're doing right now as we speak. I think he sent, uh, he already sent 500 satellites uh, that uh, that is part of the Starlink system uh, that provides a broadband connectivity to any part of the world. I think they're send, trying to send out uh, at least 20,000 satellites. I think those things that gives you. Uh, very high bandwidth, uh, very good uh, high speed internet um, for anywhere in the world, which is a big part. I think uh, from that, they're trying to invest that money into space exploration and trying to build a colony in Mars. I think uh, in I think NASA is not planning to do something because it's it's really hard to do in a, that in a government uh, governmental level because. Uh, you need to get that fund from the government. I think Elon Musk is doing a better, far better job on uh, colonizing, actually, actually taking steps to colonize Mars than the government. Exactly. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Yeah, I think uh, San, Sanjay Dulankar, uh, uh, I think he he brought up an interesting point where he says some of the interesting projects students can do to receive uh, better satellite images using um, R, uh, RTL, SDR, Dongo, and Raspberry Pi, NOAA, and Neutrostat uh, can even receive uh, Raven bird telemetry, which is, uh, which is true, I think. Uh, 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 that's a that's an interesting um, point to uh, keep in mind that everybody can uh, participate and get data that is related to Earth um, and uh, this uh, satellite uh, satellites looking into Earth. Um, so for satellites that were not looking into Earth, that are um, let's say you want to get satellite data on Mars. I think Martian satellite data is. I think Martian rover 
images are available. I think people can browse over it if, if you want to. Um, but I think satellite data wise, I think you have to request. I think if, uh, if you do a brief Google search, you can find those links into to NASA. I think most of the data that, that is related to uh, Mars data is available. Moon data, I think Luna data is also available. I think most of the data sets are free. If, they, if it is NASA, it's free. Uh, if it is NASA, it definitely is free data. So, so I am doing an international relations degree. So I am doing an art degree. Today this is the first time I participate for in geoscience this and science subject webinar series. So I want to need to know about that. So if astrobiology is affected the Sri Lankan maritime maritime security. So is there any relation between maritime security and astrobiology? So I need to know about that. Uh, okay, I think we have that, that question too. Also, no? Yeah. So yeah. I okay. think uh, we have, uh, as I know, you need the uh, marine biology or something like that, no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, up to now we are just working with some of uh, Marine sectors, but but only regarding the our extreme uh, analysis of the extreme con conditions. The example is uh, 2012 or 2013. We have been getting some of details from the Mars Curiosity rover. Uh, they have been analyzing the, some kind of extra diffractions of the Mars soil, and as well as they just comparing the that soil pattern in some uh, in. Uh, Locations in the planet Earth, we just find out the one place in very close to the uh, Danish Koli to Salimena, which is located in the under the sea, and other place in the USA, you know, some kind of uh, volcanic one. So I'm I'm also just surprised how we just uh, supposing to having in Sri Lanka because of uh, we didn't have that much uh, volcanic uh, formations in according to our geological background we have, but uh, but uh, somewhere and all the things we have some kind of uh, geological the boundaries uh, which are relevant to the uh, that uh, soil. So anyhow, same project we have some initiate uh, relevant to the some kind of uh, narrowing sectors, but uh, anytime we didn't uh, uh, head in with the that kind of uh, institutes or anything because of specifically providing to the astrobiology or something like that. Because of the that project, uh, we have been uh, affiliated and cooperated with the Pivot Institute, even though sometimes I also remember Ocean Institute also there, uh, some of like uh, marine sectors and as well as uh, Indian marine sectors, uh, very close to the Chennai and the Danish Kodi. They also provided actually it, it's based on, I think, uh, something uh, oil or something like that. They're just looking for something like that, uh, not relevant to the our project. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there any questions? Marlene, have you finished all your questions? I think there are a lot of questions. I am unable to read those. <laughs> I have seen there are a lot of questions in there. Yeah, I think I think uh, it's. Uh, I think there's one other question. I think what is CA2 plus energy one? Peter, it is Kasim. Kasim, what is asking? I'm yeah. not sure. I, I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. I think we covered all of the questions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, as the time is over, we have to conclude today's webinar. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, we think you guys are gaining uh, that what you're looking for uh, from this knowledgeable and interesting session. Uh, once again, I would like to pay our gratitude to Dr. Arvindra and Mr. Marlin for accepting our invitation. Okay, uh, thank you for joining with us. Have a nice day. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Have a nice day. <laughs>